Well, Happy New Year to everyone. <laughs> Very Anglican of you, Malcolm. <laughs> um, it's good to, to uh, take the opportunity of a new year to think about how we're going to live. Um, everyone does it. New Year's resolutions are, are running wild again. Everybody's thinking about what they're going to do and how they're going to improve their life. And, and some are even thinking about how long they can keep them for. Um, you know, some people are hoping that they might last out the week. Um, some people recognize that it's just the aspiration, really. It's just like having a, a wish. I, I would like to think that I could be a better person this year that I could live better, that I could do this or I could do that. I, I kind of want to shift our focus a little bit this morning. Um, if you make New Year's resolutions, great. Um, just be sensible. Don't, don't set yourself a goal that you can't keep. It's not worth it. It's, it's like me promising to go to the gym every day. It's not going to happen. I just know it's not going to happen. Well, it's bad enough just getting exercise every day. <clears throat> What I would encourage everyone to do, whether you're in here this morning, whether you're watching online, what I would like to encourage everyone to do is, how about reading your Bible every day? If you haven't done it or don't do it, how about starting? Um, if you're anything like me, um, I've got various reading plans that I've used, and um, after a while, um, like sort of three, four years in, I get a bit bored because it's the same scriptures in the same order. So every now and again, I'll switch Bible reading plan just to mix it up a bit to, to give me a slightly different exposure to God's word. So that's why I've put out in the foyer five different Bible reading plans. And um, there's a few copies of each. If we run out, I can copy more. But the idea is I want to encourage everyone to think about how do you get into God's word? How do you hear God's voice? How do you let God speak to you? And turning to his word and his Bible every day is, I think, really, really, really important. And you have to engage with God as you go. It's not just about reading for the sake of reading. It's about reading to let God speak into your heart and into your life. Um, so I'd encourage you, think about that. If there's one good New Year's resolution, it will be, I'll try and read the Bible this year. Um, and and I, I mean the Bible. I, I would say cover to cover, if possible. If you can't do cover to cover, do the New Testament. And if you can't do that, do the Gospels. At least hear what Jesus had to say in his own words. And um, I'm happy. I've got, there's a New Testament reading plan there, which is really simple. It's like five chapters a week. That's like no more than 20 minutes 25 minutes a week. Surely we could all do that as a bare minimum. Um, if you want to go on, there are full, there's a full, the full McChaney uh, Bible reading plan out there, four different sections of the scriptures every day, two in the morning, two at night. You can read um, a slightly small, something in the middle, there's, there's all sorts. But I encourage you, engage with God's word this year. <clears throat> it's really, really important. And as, as, as we move into this new year, um, we've, we've chosen 1 Peter 4, verse 10, as our, um, if you like, verse for this year. So 1 Peter 4, verse 10. Um, I'll, I'll, read, I'll read that verse for you first, and then I'm going to come back to the, the section in a minute. But the verse reads, Just as each one has received a gift, use it to serve others as good stewards of the varied grace of God. And I want you to think this morning, I want to challenge you to think this morning about, um, it's, it's, we just had Christmas, who had a really useful gift this Christmas? Yeah? Um, I had a pair of shoes. I can assure you, they are going to get good use. I, I, you will see me walking around in those shoes. As B pointed out last Sunday, um, they still, I left the stickers on, I have now removed the stickers. But so I can walk around in my shoes without everybody knowing they're brand new. <clears throat> but they will get good use. Who got a gift where you looked at it and thought, yeah, that's going in the cupboard? <laughs> yeah, anybody? No one wants to admit it, do they? <laughs> but sometimes you get gifts, don't you, where you look at it and you just kind of go, oh, yeah, that's not me. 
Has there anybody ever re-gifted things? No, it's just me. <laughs> I can't believe that. Where someone's given you something and you just kind of go, no, no, I'll pass that on to someone else and re-gifted it. No, uh, not on the same day, mind you. <laughs> you see, we, we all have received gifts of various kinds. Some of them, I'm sure, are really helpful. Um, I'm sure some of them are really wanted. Um, I, I, I love books, as many of you know. And um, I have, I have, by the way, I do have an Amazon wish list if you want to buy me a book, that's fine. Um, and my birthday's coming up soon as well. And um, <laughs> what, what, what I do know is this, there's, 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 I have three types of books, right? There's books that I like and I want to read, yeah? That I've chosen, yeah, for me, fun books. Then I have some books which I buy because they help me do what I want to do. And they're kind of what I would call workbooks. And then there's a third category. The books that someone else wants me to read. You know? And, and you know what? They are the hardest books to read. <laughs> they really are. They're the hardest books. Because sometimes, none of you, by the way, none of you, I don't think anybody in this room has ever done this to me, but occasionally someone will give me a book and I go, Oh, I don't really want to read that. And I have absolutely zero motivation. Okay, what's all this got to do with this morning? <clears throat> Let me go back to 1 Peter chapter 4. And I'd like just to read the opening verses just to get a bit of context <clears throat> for what Peter is saying. Peter starts chapter 4 by saying this, Therefore, since Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same understanding because the one who suffers in the flesh is finished with sin. In order to live the remaining time in the flesh, no longer for human desires, but for God's will. There's a wonderful New Year's resolution if you ever wanted one. To not live for myself anymore, but to live for God. For there had already been enough, there's already been enough time spent in doing what the Gentiles choose to do. Oh, this is so pertinent to New Year's, isn't it? Carrying on in unrestrained behaviour. I'm sure none of us have done that over the last few weeks. Um, evil desires, drunkenness, orgies, carousing on lawless idolatry. The world is surprised that you don't join them in the same flood of wild living and they'll even slander you. But they will give an account to the one who stands ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel was also preached to those who are now dead, so that although they might be judged in the flesh according to human standards, they might live in the spirit according to God's standards. Now the end of all times, of all things, is near. Therefore be alert and sober-minded for prayer. Above all, maintain constant love for one another, since love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. Oh, that's a challenge, isn't it? Especially at Christmas with family. Sorry. Be hospitable without complaining. Just as each one has received a gift, use it to serve others as good stewards of the varied grace of God. And if anyone speaks, let it be as the one who speaks God's word. If anyone serves, let it be from the strength God provides so that God may be glorified through Jesus Christ in everything. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. God has equipped us, given us the ability to serve each other. I want us to, to let that thought sink in a little bit this morning. I don't know about you, but I mean, one of the things that I'm very, I'm very much aware of is um, it's, it's interesting people's idea of church. Have, have you heard people talking about the church doing this or the church doing that? Have you, have you, I don't know if you've heard across these, these things being said. Um, I hear it occasionally. And, and it, I've always found it interesting and challenging because 
the church is us. It's you and me. And it makes me laugh when, when, when people think, well, well, why can't the church pay for that? And I'm thinking, I'm not sure that we have got the money to pay for that. Or why can't the church do this? And it's kind of going, whoa, whoa, whoa. why can't the church do a holiday club? And I'm thinking, looking around the room thinking, right, um, what do you think, Mildred? Holiday club? I'm sure Hopkins would be game. Yeah? It'd be fun, wouldn't it? And I'm thinking to myself, how are we, how, 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 that's us. How are we going to do this? You see, the church is us. Each one of us has been given gifts to serve. We are called by God to be the church. In Romans 12, uh, verses 4 and 5, we're reminded that we're all members of one another. We're all joined together. There's, there's no such thing as a mystical thing called the church. It's us. It's you and it's me. And so as we go into this new year, one of the reasons for choosing this, this verse is really so we can just encourage each other. Will you play your part? Will you play your part? Will you step up? Will you take responsibility? Will you own it? Will you say, yeah, I am? So when someone says Kingsway Chapel, you think me. When someone thinks about Kingsway Chapel doing something, you think me. That's my responsibility. I'm part of this. And every single one of us has been gifted by God, equipped by God, in order to serve. We... We've been graced, if you like. God has graced us with gifts. And in one sense, you yourself are a gift to the church. It doesn't matter about how fit or healthy you are. It doesn't matter about how old you are or how young you are. Every single person is a gift to the church. We need each other. Or to put it bluntly, we need you. We need every single one. And if you want to read about this, the, the, the workings of this, this thing called church, the body of Christ, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And it talks there from verse 14 on. It talks about the body. And it says, well, how can you say, oh, you, you don't need that part of the body? Or how can you say you don't need this part? And he says, no, no, no. We all need each other. Each one has been gifted in some way. What you can do might be different from what I can do. It's been really interesting working with Alan over the last 12, 18 months particularly. And I can tell you this with a utter confidence. He's not me. <laughs> he is very different to me. His humour is different to mine. We know that, says Volko. Yeah, we know that. And, and his approach to health and safety is different to mine. Um, his idea of how to go about things is different to mine. That's why you need both of us. <laughs> yeah? Because he does things. And I look around this room and I go, do you know what? You are all different to me. You all have something slightly different that you bring to this group of people, which we call Kingsway Chapel. God has gifted you. I don't know whether you know what your strengths are, what your gifts are. I don't know whether you're confident. I remember a friend of mine uh, uh, years ago, uh, he described how he was, he, was, he, was, he was on the leadership team of a church in the south of England. And he talked about how they, they, they decided that they were going to look at the giftings of their leadership team. And um, they sat down and they did a lot of work. They took some time out and they explored and they analyzed. And there was one particular guy who said, you know, um, I, I'm, my, my gift is pastoral care. And um, it was fascinating because they even, they even got some of those self-tests, you know, those tick the boxes, questionnaire things that tells you 
um, what your gifts might be. What right, Actually, it tells you what you think your gifts are. And his came out, pastoral care. And the rest of the guys in the room were like, oh, how do we explain to this guy that his ability to do pastoral care, care is like getting a brick over the head? He is, was the most untactful, unhelpful person out. And they had to gently say to him, I'm sorry, you, you need to listen to other people. It's not just about what you think. Um, um, I, I say that because I don't know about you, I don't know if you know what your strengths are. Um, there are certain things I used to think I was good at. I'm now not quite so sure. <laughs> there are certain things I thought I was useless at, and I'm now not quite so sure. <clears throat> One of the things I have found through my life is this. God equips who he calls. He doesn't call the people who think they're equipped. <clears throat> and when God calls us to throw our lot in, to give our all, he will equip us. I can testify to that. Um, as some of you who have known me for a few years will know, um, I have probably consistently said I am not a children's worker. For the last year, Alan has got me doing kids' club. And I, okay, I'm not the one running around doing the games, normally. Um, I, I'm, I don't always do the story and communicate with the kids. But I found this. Befriending people of any age is a gift. Being able to smile and remember someone's name is a gift. And just those little things make a difference. And I'll also tell you this. When there's no one left to do something and you step in, it's amazing how God will bless you and God will help you. Now you may be thinking, oh, I, might, I might have known what my gifting was 20 years ago or I might know what my gifting might be or you might be sitting there going, I haven't got a clue. Well, I'd like to give you an advance notice. Saturday the 28th of January, so what, that's four weeks' time. We are, we are going to take a morning here to explore gifting with anyone and everyone who turns up. And I, I'd love it if you all could come and, and we will talk about how do we use the gifts and the abilities that God has given us. You may be really clear what you can do. You may be thinking, I haven't got a clue what I can do. Well, will you join us and explore together what it might look like to, to serve and use your gifting here in Kingsway Chapel. I'm reminded that passage goes on. It says, um, if your gift is speaking, then, do it, then make sure you're speaking God's word. And if your gift is serving, make sure that you do it in God's strength. And that's another reminder to me that in all of this, what we do, it's not about me. It's about him. And that what I'm seeking is, is I, w I want to be able to whether I'm speaking like I am to you now or whether I'm speaking to someone over a cup of coffee or whether I'm chatting to a little kid on a Friday evening about how they've grazed their knee when they were running too fast and got a little bit of carpet burn. Am I speaking God's words? Am I communicating something of his love? Am I imparting something of his spirit? And when we serve, whether it's fixing a leaky door or whether it's taking down Christmas decorations or whether it's serving tea and coffee do we do it in the strength that God gives us <clears throat> we may not feel particularly strong <clears throat> but when we are obedient God enables us by the way I think serving coffee is the best way to get to know people so if you're looking around church thinking you don't know people Coffee rotor. Sign up for the coffee rotor. You'll get to speak to everyone. It's great. 
It's really good. You, you may not get all their names at once, but you'll get to speak to everyone. You see, gifting has a purpose. And this is where I kind of want to get to. God equips us. God's called us and equipped us for a purpose, and that's to serve. And in one sense, focusing on our gifts is not always helpful. Sometimes the best thing to do is realize you are called to serve. Galatians 5 verse 13 says, Serve each other through love. The best way to demonstrate love for other people is in serving them. So the question really should be not what have I got, but how can I help? The question should not be what are my gifts, but how can I serve? You know, Philippians 2 verse 4, that, that little passage says, don't look to your own interests, but look to the interests of others. It's not about what's best for me, it's about how can I help. That's been my experience with Kids Club. I didn't particularly want to do Kids Club. I didn't particularly feel gifted to do Kids Club. But I kind of said, okay, there's a need, I will help, I will serve. And I said to Alan, if you lead it, I'll back there. I'll be there every week, I will help you. And that's what I've done. I've come along and I've smiled and I've remembered people's names and I took the register, I can do that. And I've helped serve drinks and I've occasionally been made to take part in silly games, um, none of which will become public. And, and, and we've served together. It's about focusing on what we can give, not on what we can get. And as we step into a new year, that's why I really want to challenge us. What can we give? This is what it, what it means to follow the example of Jesus. In Mark chapter 10, um, Jesus said, <laughs> whoever wants to be first must be the slave or the servant of all. But even the Son of Man, didn't come to be served, but to serve. But to serve. You see, he's given us that example to follow. And if we want to be followers of Jesus, then that requires that we take this idea of thinking about others more than ourselves, and about serving, and about helping, and about giving. And Jesus even said that when you serve other people, he takes it personally, as if you had served him. It says in Matthew 25, verse 40, whatever you did for one of the least of these, you did for me. Will you play your part this year? Will you play your part? Will you seriously think about how you can serve, what you can give? Now, okay, I, I, I perhaps need to pause there for a minute because I'm, I'm conscious that it's, it's very easy to think, well, Jeff, I'm, I'm not really sure I've, I've got the ability to do what I used to do. I'm not really sure I, I can. Well, let me tell you a few things, a few ways you can serve. Every single person in this room can pray. And a bit more about that next week, but you can pray. There's a prayer diary. Do you pray for everyone? Do you think about praying for everyone? Everyone can do that. It doesn't matter how old you are, you can pray. How about being friendly? I think, look, just looking around the room, I think everyone can be friendly. I think. Some of you might need to nudge yourself a bit. But just saying hello, just saying how are you, or even going up to someone and saying, do you know what, I have no idea if I know you or not, and I don't, definitely don't know your name, who are you? Be friendly. Make friends. It might even be a case of, do you want to meet for a coffee? Or, would you like to come round one evening and have a chat? 
Make friends. Those are the simple things we can all do that make a huge difference in people's lives. And then, um, I, I really honestly think everyone can serve tea and coffee. Even if you don't make tea or coffee particularly well, we can put you on team with someone that does. And it's okay. You can, you can pour. You can pour liquid into a cup. You, you can make tea and coffee. Serve tea and coffee. Why not? I, if, if, I, if, I, if it was down to me, I think I'd put everyone in the church on the tea, tea and coffee rotor. Because I honestly think it really is a simply good way to serve. Then, of course, there's all the other stuff. There's, we've got activities all through the week. And, okay, a lot of our activities are with, with little children. You don't have to be great with kids. If you're a lovely, friendly person, you can, you can be the welcomer. If, if you're okay helping out in the kitchen, you could just do that. But if you do enjoy getting on the floor and playing silly games and, and jumping and running around, which, to be honest, I'm starting to find I can't do quite as much as I used to, then great. Come and join in. Come and sign up. You see, we all need to play our part. It's like your body. You are ill when part of your body is not working properly. It's not functioning properly. And therefore you get out of sorts. <clears throat> There's something not quite right, so you, you're trying to cough. It's, and then because you're not breathing properly, or your lungs are not working properly. Or you, if, you, if you're anything like me, you stump your toe, and, and it hurts, and so you don't walk properly. And that affects all sorts of other stuff. I mean, it, it just goes on and on and on, as all of you know about your own physical health. It's the same spiritually, and it's the same for us as a church. If everyone plays their part, if everyone serves, if everyone's involved, you have a healthy church. And we're called to steward what we've got. And this is the bit which I think is the challenge for me and I hope will be a challenge for you. You see, God has called us and equipped us to serve. So that God might be glorified through Christ Jesus in everything. That's what it says in verse 11. So that God might be glorified. You see, there's no question about the call. There's no question about the equipping. That's, that's what God's done. The only, the only thing to assess is our willingness to serve and use what God has given us. In Hebrews chapter 6, and verse 10, it reminds us that God's not unjust. He will not forget your work and love you demonstrated by serving the saints and by continuing to serve them. God notices. <clears throat> I remember um, years ago learning this lesson, that in church there, there is no important role. There's just lots of roles. There is no more significant role or less important role and the person who cleans the toilets is just as important as the preacher. Because I will tell you this, and I honestly genuinely mean it, if we have dirty to toilets, people won't come. You think about it. The person who vacuums the carpet is really important. Because if we don't have a clean building, people will think less of us. And you can run that through. Sunday school is so, so, so important. I remember hearing a, a story of a guy um, who had, had enlisted in the army, been sent overseas, and um, 
was, was serving alongside someone else and this person was wounded in the fighting and this person turns to his friend and he said, will you do something for me? And he said, yes, of course I will. And he said, when you get back home, he said, here's the name. I thought, when you go find this guy, I want you to tell him, thank you. What you taught me has helped me die well. And the guy thought, strange message. So he came home, tracked this guy down, knocked on his front door, and said, do you remember such and such a person? And the guy looked at him and said, uh, vaguely. And then he relayed the message. And the guy broke down in tears. And he said, I thought teaching those kids in Sunday school didn't make a difference. But it did. I still remember my Sunday school teacher. That was a long time ago. You see, all of these roles are vitally important for us to flourish and grow as a church. And God has equipped all of us so that we can serve together and impact this world for Jesus. It, the world needs it more now than ever. We need God more than ever. This year, it's so important that we have hope, that we have joy, that we have peace, so we can show the world how good God is. So will you play your part? Will you step up? Can we make this our New Year's resolution? That we will serve God as we serve each other together for his glory let's pray Father I thank you for the amazing way in which you work in our lives I thank you that you do so much more than we could ever hope or imagine thank you that you challenge, you direct, you call, you equip, you enable us to be the people you've called us to be. Father, as we step into this new year, may we go confident that you have equipped us and will equip us for every opportunity that you call us to step into. May we know your hand of blessing upon us. May we see your kingdom come here. May we see your will being done here. That your name is glorified. Amen.